Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful example video here on our beautiful channel. What we're going through today is just classes. We're going to start with classes today. It's going to be great and uh, it's going to open up doors for us to make all kinds of examples. So let's get started. I included string and vector just to give you an example of what is going on. A string and a vector is a class that someone else made. These are classes. So the thing is that when you create your class inside your main uh, thing here, you, you're not going to have to include it. You can create it in here or you can create it in a separate file. We'll talk about the separate file includes and stuff later. So let's get started here. Um, let me show you that a string is a class that someone else made. String str for example is a class, right? It This is a user created class that someone made. Then there are standard types, right? Like an integer, a double, a float. Now we haven't talked about floats a lot, but uh, floats are basically doubles with less accuracy. And you can write f afterwards. This this just means that this isn't a double we're trying to put into float because it's going to have to convert that and then put it in here. So we just write f directly so it doesn't have to do that extra conversion. So that's a float. Then you have booleans of course. Uh, false for example, and such, and so on, and so on. And of course, we're forgetting char, which has to do with our string. So our string is a class that someone made. That's why it's green. These are standard types. Standard types can be used to build classes, for example, like string. So a string has a character uh, array in it, right? Something like this. But, uh, and that you can, it's a dynamic array like we've been making. So that's exactly how that works, right? It's something that someone made and thought that, okay, if we have an array of chars, we can actually have a long line of, uh, of uh, characters to make a sentence, for example. And that's a string. And then you have vector, which is a, another type of class called a template class. Now, we've talked about templates and how they work. And this, this is a template class. So at compile time, it will decide what uh, type this vector should be. Okay, when this object is created, either at compile time or runtime, this object will be created, right? And then it will choose what type it should hold. So that's a template class, but it's still a class because inside here is a dynamic template array for any type that you can add and remove and stuff like that. So you can call this int vec, for example. And that, there you go, that works. So they're like Lego pieces. These are the basic Lego pieces that build up these uh, user created bigger Lego pieces that you can still build with. So just think of it all as a big Lego box with all kinds of stuff in it. And we're going to make our own Lego piece today uh, called Person. So this is a very simple class. It's good to start off with because it, it shows you basically what a class is. A class represents, let's say, real life objects to make it convenient for you to put them into programming form. If you make a game, you have a class character, weapon, item, uh, map, whatever, game, all that stuff. Okay, And in any different scenario, you can just pull in things from the real world and make a class. And you're going to have to use this a lot. This is the base for object-oriented programming. So let's get started here. Let's say class person. Now what I do is when I create a class, the first letter is always capital. I know these aren't. I know these aren't uh, because they're meant to be types and you don't want a type to have a uh, first letter capital. So, uh, But your own classes, you should have a, a capital letter here private public. So I'm going to explain all this. Protected. Protected is something you can ignore for a long time until we get into inheritance. So that's a, that's a whole different topic. But so this is just ignore right now. Public and private, well, they're just what they are. Private, the private section, uh, make sure that all the stuff that is written here, created in here, will not be accessible outside of the class. String has a bunch of private Things like the actual array that holds the characters is private. You can't actually go and directly access it and, and do stuff. So you're going to have to go through different measures to get to it. Public is basically everything that that you can access from outside the class. The class bounds. For example, all of these functions here are in the public section. And the actual function that creates it is also in the public section. So we're going to talk about all this. And you'll understand as we go along. But let's get started here. String. 
all the inside, the guts, are going to be in our private section. Things we don't want the user to access directly. So the name. And you're asking why. Well, of course you want the name to be accessed from outside. Well, it will be, but through a function. So we'll make it much clearer. And that's more for programming, uh, clean programming reasons than for anything else. You could have these in public and access them directly. But uh, it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't make a good you know, programming uh, habit. So a person might have a name. A person might have a date of birth. A person has an age. Not might, they do. So they do have these three things. You can add a lot of different things here, job, all that stuff. But we'll just stick with these three right now. So we're making a person from the real world. We're putting them into the computer somehow, a, a type here. So what you have to have in your program is a constructor, or in your class, excuse me, and a destructor. And we'll see exactly what these do as we go along. The constructor is only called once, and it's called at the creation of this. Here, actually, if you write it like this, the constructor is being called, the default constructor. There are no parameters. Remember when we call a function, you can send in parameters. Well, this is the function that actually creates the object. So anytime you're creating it, you're calling the constructor. Okay, and there are different constructors that you can have. And they all are written this way, with the class name and then the function header, or the parameter list, excuse me, and the function body. Now. The destructor is written in the same way, but it has this thing in here. And you only have one destructor, remember that. Only have one destructor. You don't have several destructors, but you have several constructors. And a constructor is, uh, they're defined by their parameter list. So a constructor has the same name always, but the parameter lists can differ. And that, that means you can have several different ones. So this is called a default constructor since it doesn't have any parameters all this does is actually just initiate your variables to something uh, in something uh, to have a start value right so xx 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 you won't actually use this when creating a person okay you could create a person like this just here we can actually create a person now person p1 and person p2 Okay, <clears throat> so this gives us another important topic to talk about. P1 and P2 are different persons. They have different versions of these, different copies of these. Okay, so P1 will have its own name, date of birth, and age. P2 will have its own da name, date of birth, and age. They have the same exact things. This is like a template. This is like a, a big blue, 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 excuse me, blueprint for a person, and these are following that and actually going through and creating these for themselves. So we'll see what happens now. This default constructor will be called in this case. We don't want that. We want to create a person as soon as the person is uh, created. I mean, give, give the uh, wait, optional constructor. This, we want to give a person some logical values, right? We want to create an actual person. So what we can do is string name string date of birth and then int age. Now you're saying, hmm, these are the same values or same names and how are we going to change these actual values, not the local values in here because you're giving them the same name as the uh, as the member variables. We can write that as member variables. This is what they're called. Now there is a way in every class Okay, this is something you should know from now, I, I'd say. There is a pointer called this. Something that you don't have to define, it's always there. When you're working in the class, brackets here, okay, and you're working in the functions and things like that, and you want to access the actual member variables and the member functions that we'll have down here, then you can use this. And in the case of local var variables having the same name as the member variables, you can differ them by using this. So this name, this date of birth and this age equals name, date of birth, and age. Okay, so these, this name and this name, very different things. This is the local variable in the function, this is the member variable. And we're differing them because this name accesses the actual one and name will, and it will get the value of the local variable name. So this is really good to know. I know it's a little confusing, but try to, 
try to understand it and uh, you'll be fine. So what we can do is we can say we can say person created okay end line and here we go destructor called for let's say this name now you don't have to use this everywhere I do I like to do it just because it, it uh, tells me that I'm trying to I'm actually accessing this but you don't have to the only really time you need to use it if you have a local variable with the same name so otherwise you don't have to do this it will know that you're trying to access the the class's own member variables but I still do it just to make sure it looks good um, so there we go the destructor is always called at return zero at the end of the program now I don't have some pause here because if we use that I'm gonna use another way to keep it paused um, so uh, just so we can see the destructor being called otherwise you don't see it it just happens and it passes and closes the program uh, but there we go this is the difference so now we actually want to use this constructor to give them some logical values not just none and stuff like that so the way you differ constructors is by the parameter list like I said and you can't choose you cannot choose to just input one of these or two of these you have to input all of these when you're calling it otherwise they will say hmm there is no constructor with just one variable in here parameter so you have to do that either none or three or if if you want to you can create another constructor with just two and they they will be different because they have a different parameter list so let's say we create Bob with the oh whoops date of birth uh, 90 90 let's say 1202 and the age of excuse me with the age here because I'm not gonna actually follow the real life clock here I don't really care that much to be honest so we'll just we just want to see so it works and then we have John another person p2 can also hold name age and a date of birth so he's a few days older but he is somehow 230 years old so John is a old person and this is a young person so there we go there we go that way we have a bunch of stuff using this constructor and uh, a member function basically are just functions that can only be called from something that is of the type person so if I create a function here void print out okay and that's basically just gonna see out everything together name name <gasps> this name just to be clear uh, DOB this date of birth H this H and line so this is gonna print out everything in a line uh, for our person so we're just gonna make sure we print that out uh, down here um, p1 dot print out p2 dot print out so there are different variables and uh, we'll see what happens now we'll see this will be interesting oh whoops yeah this is the reason I had system pause well what you do to keep it paused is you go into debug and you say start without debugging and it will keep it open and then you can see the destructor being called we didn't call the destructor ourselves okay the program does it the compiler or the program does it for itself as it wants to all of these destructors are being called for everything but we just specified for person the person class that it should print something when the destructor is called and that it did so for John and Bob two different objects of the class person of the type person here and uh, name Bob see they're very different person created person created so everything is seen here working and I hope you learned something from this I've been rambling on too much I'm sorry but I just want to make sure you're really clear on what's going on here so uh, yeah thanks for watching and I hope you learned something again keep working hard get real good and I'll see you in the next video alright bye bye